Hey everybody, I'm Steve with the Hobby Farm Guys. And I'm Brian. And I'm Eric. <laughs> yeah, we can't forget Eric. Today we're back with more information on pruning your fruit trees. Stay tuned. We're the Hobby Farm Guys and we're back with part two of our Pruning Your Fruit Trees series. And if you looked at our first video, uh, that laid the foundation. That was the uh, when you should prune and why you should prune, along with some general tips for pruning. Uh, today we're going to look at the three-step process for pruning your fruit trees. It's really a simple process. Now keep in mind this uh, process applies to just about every type of tree, but as you mentioned in the last video, uh, citrus trees are a little bit different and you might have a little bit different process for those. Step one involves uh, removing the 3Ds. That's dead, damaged, or diseased wood. So any branches that didn't survive the winter, maybe they broke, maybe the deer come in and eating them down to where they can't be saved. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just the cold got them. Anything that's dead like that, that's broken, that's, that's eaten on, go ahead and get that out of the tree. Um, also any disease wood. If you find any sign of disease or, or pest, that kind of stuff, go ahead and cut all that out. Make sure that you're sterilizing your cutters in between cuts and get that wood right out of the orchard and get it burned uh, so that those pests don't just move somewhere else. And while you're doing that, go ahead and take care of all those water sprouts and suckers. Those suckers are the ones that come off, off, off the base of the tree, right on the base. Mm -hmm. The water sprouts usually come off branches, but then they shoot straight up. You'll recognize them. Uh, just take care of those right at that same time. And that's that first step, just getting rid of that dead, diseased, and damaged wood. Yeah. All right, so here we have a peach tree where we've got some, some dead wood. This has been damaged. You've seen even we've had some insect problems here. This whole branch needs to come out, so we're going to remove this entire branch as part of our 3Ds. It's big enough that we're going to have to use a saw for this one instead of just the clippers. <laughs> Here's a, 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 a little example of a sucker. Some trees will suckle uh, pretty regularly, others not so much. I already took care of my suckering tree, but this gives you an example. This stuff, uh, these are coming actually up the, the root stock. So these trees are grafted onto a hardier rootstock for their survival. So this won't give me pears like this will. This is going to be a wild tree, probably something. So we don't need that. Just take it right down to the ground and, and take that out. Got another one coming up right there. All right, so right here we've got a broken branch. We're going to cut that one out as well. And then just... So here again, we have some examples of some water sprouts. We've got our branch coming around. You can see the, the fresh growth just coming straight up. Uh, you can see the different color because it's from this, this last year. So we don't need that. We'll just go ahead and come in with a sharp pruner, take it off right there. So the next step in the pruning process is to thin out the tree. Here you want to remove any branches from the center of the tree so you can let some light in, uh, let the air flow through there, produce good healthy fruit. Uh, you want to start by removing any downward branches, cut those out. Uh, and you also want to look for any branches that are rubbing against one another or, or, or crossing and remove those so that you can uh, thin out that tree a little bit. So at this point, step back and look at your tree. Do you see any areas where there's multiple branches coming out from the same area at different angles and different directions? If so, thin those out. And uh, you also want to look at the crotch angles. That's the angle between the trunk of the tree and the branches coming off of it. So if the trunk of the tree is, say, 12 o'clock, you want your branches ideally to be around 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock. If there are any flatter than that, a wider angle, uh, odds are that it's going to break under the load of the fruit or the snow in the winter time. And if it's narrower, you're going to end up with a, a bushier tree with fruit that's higher up and, and harder to pick. One last thing to note on this topic is you can prune those trees into different forms or shapes. Uh, there's three primary ones that we hear about. We have a an vase or a open center. We have the central leader and what's called a modified central leader. Now, ideally, uh, you'll see, hey, train this type of tree to this type of shape. Mm -hmm. uh, truth is, you can do anything you want. Yeah. Um, those trees are going to be there. Uh, but you will find that you'll have more success um, if you kind of follow those recommendations. Personally, I have no problem taking a central leader and turning it into an open or a vase. But it's a little more tricky taking those trees that are typically pruned to a vase shape 
and turning them into a central leader just because yeah. of sunlight and other things that they need. Uh, you can do whatever you want, though, whatever works for you. You can also get creative. Uh, you can train your trees to be uh, grow against the wall or to form a fence or a hedge. Um, that's a little more advanced than what I'm ready to do yet, though. Yeah. All right, so this tree we're going to trim to the kind of vase style. Uh, with that, some of these branches are getting a little bit big and tall and out of reach, so we're going to just take them out as part of our thinning cuts. We're going to take this one right here and take that whole <coughs> section out. Put some muscle into it. Here we have an example of another branch that's crossing. It's also, I think, back into the center of the tree. We want neither of those, so this entire branch is going to come out. One of the things we want to look at is, is kind of the crotch angle, and that's what we're talking about right here, right? How much angle have I got between my trunk and my branch or where they spread out? This is about what we want. We want about a 2 o'clock or a 10 o'clock. That's going to make the strongest uh, union there, so it's less likely to break. And then just right here above it, you see this branch is growing back into the tree, so we're going to cut that one as well. Those that have been broken off or damaged, those that are going to shade other branches, they're just going to come in and start taking that stuff out. So Brian, before we move to step three, if I have different kinds of trees, how would I know what shape I want to make them? Well again, a lot of that depends on a few things, how much space you have, just what appearance you're looking for. And as Steve mentioned, there are some recommendations for certain types of trees. Now, if you have uh, apples, sweet cherries, pears, or European plums, that's generally a uh, central leader type uh, that's recommended. Uh, for a vase or open center shape, it's recommended for apricots, peaches, nectarines, sour cherries, and Japanese plums. And a modified central leader is more for uh, things like figs and pomegranates, persimmons, and some nuts like walnuts, chestnuts, and pistachios. The final step, uh, step three, is to head back. This one's the easiest because you're basically just giving that tree a haircut. Right. You're, you're taking you know, the previous year's growth and you're just taking some of that back. Um, what that will do over time is give you nice, sturdy, uh, thick branches instead of long, spindly, gangly ones that sag and break underneath the weight of the fruit. It also activates the hormones in the tree that produces basically a smaller, more compact fruit tree overall, mm -hmm. making it easier to pick that fruit to begin with. So here we got a branch. We're going to make a heading cut on this one. Uh, what we don't want is all our fruit on, on one long branch weighing it down. Uh, so we're going to cut it back a little bit and make a stronger branch here. Again, you can see the buds are pointing in different directions and we want to pick one that's going to go in the direction we want the branch to grow. So I'm going to cut right above this bud right here. Again, at about a 45 degree angle, just like that. Hey Steve, how would I know what last year's growth looks like and how much should I cut off? Well, you can distinguish last year's growth from two-year-old growth by that little wrinkly uh, ring of bark around that stem. Depending upon the tree variety, uh, you might find them anywhere from about two inches to almost four feet back from the tip of each branch. Now when you get ready to cut that, make sure you cut about a quarter inch above the bud, having that bud face the direction you want that branch to grow. As far as how much to cut back, it really depends upon the tree and your goals. Generally, on trees that grow fruit on last year's wood, like peaches and nectarines, uh, they tend to grow vigorously and they should be trimmed back about 50% or so. For most other trees, like apples, plums, apricots, pears, that kind of stuff, uh, target about 20 to 30% of the previous year's growth. Sounds good. So that's the three-step process for pruning your fruit trees. 
Step one, remove the three Ds, the dead, diseased, and damaged wood from your tree. Step two, thinning cuts. You're going to remove some of those branches in order to make sure you get plenty of light and air in the tree. And finally is the heading cuts, removing some of last year's growth in order to make a strong and productive fruit tree. Remember, a little bit of maintenance goes a long way in producing healthy fruit trees. Sure does. And it's not the only thing pruning no. that's going to make a difference on whether you get to have those big, crisp, juicy apples or those flavorful pears at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some other things that we're going to look at in a future video. Things like what you need to do to ensure pollination, uh, how you can protect those trees from pests yep. and from pesky wildlife as well. <laughs> Um, so we'll look for that in a, in a future video. In the meantime, this is the Hobby Farm Guys reminding you that in life and in the orchard, growth requires just a little bit of pruning. How about macaroni? Cheesier than that. Bye, everyone. I haven't had macaroni cheesier than that. <laughs> <laughs>